What's up everyone, hope y'all are doing well. In today's video, we're diving back into the 240SX. My buddy John is on his way down from Maryland right now. He's a very, very talented welder and metal fabricator, and he is going to help us get all of the charge piping fabricated, as well as whatever else that we have time for today. I'm personally super excited because I've never had any experience in welding before, so this is gonna be an awesome learning process, and I am super, super excited to see the engine bay really come together at this stage. It's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, I'd like to introduce you to my friend John. Thanks for having me down, Carl. Appreciate you coming down on such short notice. Absolutely. I want to apologize to everybody who's watching this video. It's a little hard to hear in here with all the rain and stuff. It seems like every time we try to do something cool in here, it ends up raining and we got a metal roof. So it is what it is. We'll try to talk as, as loud as we can without yelling into the camera. But um, I wanted to first talk about the 240 that you're building because I've never seen anything like it. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, I am, uh, I'm building the same chassis, an S13 hatchback. I went down the rabbit hole and decided to do a 13B. REW, uh, I have an 82 millimeter turbo on it. I I'm building it for a, a good friend of mine that passed away a few years back. So it's a memorial build that I've been working on for going on four and a half, five years now. That's awesome. Just doing everything out of my garage, paint, fabricating, everything that I can do on my own, I'm doing it. Well, I put John's Instagram link in the description box below, so be sure to give him a follow and, and, and follow the build. It's, it's super, super cool. One more thing before we get into it, a huge thanks to Robert's Oxygen. They not only helped us out tremendously with this video, but for future videos as well by providing the welder, the gas, and all the equipment we're going to need to really get this thing taken care of. So it's, it's just awesome. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, it's super great that they helped us out. I actually been working for Robert's now for six years, and uh, on my drive down, I gave Joel a call. He's at our Greensboro location. I said, Joel, I need a favor. He came in. He said, we can take care of this. We can help you guys move forward with this build. We're gonna give you the gas. We're gonna give you the welder. Be able to do all your welding you need. And if you're gonna be welding, <laughs> Robert thought you're gonna need a helmet to be able to weld. Sick, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. All of their contact information can be found in the description box below. I know it's hot. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> It'll cool off in a minute. That looks so good. Now we just need to get some clamps on there. We've got that portion done. Now we can come over here. we got the hole saw. We control the hole yeah. through here. We can start piping into here. I also want to extend a special thanks to Norm at JRP for his help in getting us set up with all of the right tubing for today's video. If you're looking to do something similar like this to your vehicle or are just interested in speed parts in general, be sure to check out JRP online. I included the link in the description box below. Thanks again. I have this extra Type-X bumper that we can use to mock things up. Got a couple jack stands down there to hold the intercooler so we can position it. And then I guess uh, start building some brackets, right? Yep. Sweet. Ready? Yep. Right now we're working on positioning the intercooler. What John's going to do next is mount a bracket that goes on the top of the, the little bung right here into the body, like a little little thing that goes on both sides. We'll just make sure that we're centered. Build brackets off of here and here. Get this thing to hang and then we can we can address the bottom half. Okay. And see how we're gonna stable stabilize the bottom of the intercooler so it's not just rocking back and forth. Yeah yeah. Let's 
now we got brackets made. We just need to drill through, make our mounting points up here now, okay. and then we can let this thing hang. Sweet. And then we'll start plumbing everything up. We'll start building off of our considered the hot side to our pipe, okay. and work our way out of the inner floor and go to our cold side, and button this up. It's gonna look awesome. It's definitely gonna look cool. So right now I'm about to drill out some spot wells to take out this little bracket that's inside this brace. We can't use these bolt holes because of where the bungs on the radiator sit up to. We're going to have to make a new hole right here, but there's a little bracket in the way and we've got to get it out. We have the intercooler mounted at the top now using these homemade brackets. Everything turned out really good. This has to be finished off a bit, but it's amazing how solid this actually turned out. It's not secured at the bottom yet, but it's pretty tight. So once that does get put back together, that thing is not going anywhere. This is considered our hot side of the charge system. Uh, missing a coupler, so for now, you can kind of understand where this pipe's gonna actually go. We're gonna eventually get a vibrant um, 45 degree silicone coupler that'll go here. And then we're gonna go ahead and poke a hole here, three inches in diameter. And then we have, I don't know where it's at, but we have some door molding trim that will go around the perimeter of the hole to, to keep this pipe from rubbing on raw metal and, and worrying about it getting like ruptured or something like that from vibration. But we're going to finish building this, go down, get into this portion of the intercooler, and then work our way out and get into the throttle body, and then hopefully move on to a downpipe. One hold of factory. All right. Let's get this real malleable. It's oh. licorice. Don't try this at home, kids. So I took a 90, split the difference, made two 45s. Coming out of that, that fender well, I don't want just a straight 90 degree on one axis. I actually want to kind of rotate it to get it to point towards the intercooler. So it's a nice smooth transition and we're not doing a multiple couplers on it. We want to do the least amount of couplers we can do on this build. So that's what I'm going to do here now. I'm going to go get that other pipe, put it back in position, and then start marking stuff up and start tacking this stuff together. And then hopefully have a hot side pipe in about a few minutes. Figure out where this and this come up through. Right now, John is putting a bead roll into the fresh piping here. Basically, this raised portion that it's creating will prevent the coupler from sliding off. You put the clamp on this side. I always wondered how they did that. So what I had to do here was I had to compromise and 
snag a piece of three inch tubing that was a 90 degree bend because I didn't bring enough tubing. So we had to steal a piece from elsewhere. And I've pretty much taken the 90 degrees out of the equation and cut roughly 25 so we can actually make this bend and go into this fender well. And now what we'll do is we'll keep moving forward and get this cold side built and hopefully have a nice beautiful tile blow up valve sitting right here in a few minutes. While John works on the charge pipe for this side, I'm going to use the plasma gun to get this bit of metal out that's hitting the bash bar. We just gotta make a little bit of clearance here. So this is one portion of the charge piping that goes on the cold side. I wanted to show you a difference with uh, the way John set this pipe up here. Instead of a pipe like this that has a really hard transition, this one has a gradual increase. It goes from two and a half to three, which will meet up with the pipe that goes from in there up through where the battery tray was and up to the intake. But really nice looking. So we've, we've determined we're going to put the blow off valve just before the throttle body here, which is normal, most applications. Some people put it on the hot side. It's all preference. Uh, we had discussed on doing it in, in the front bumper, but Kyle uh, had a good suggestion that we might might hit a rock or two going down the highway at 200 miles an hour. So <laughs> we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick inside the car. So hold tight and we'll get a hole drilled in this and have this melted together. Nice fit. Yeah, this. Let's go wipe it down. To give you this pipe here and I want you to tell me if it's if it's facing directly down it should be 90 degrees now it should be straight up and down but I want to make sure we have plenty of clearances down there and we're not going to be hitting the firewall or steering column or a transmission you know any of those I'll just brace it you tell me when to start looking start looking all right I have about how does it look plumb wise like looking straight at it like creep back some and look look directly at the tube from a distance and tell me if it's pointing straight down and it's like perfectly vertical. It looks pretty straight to me. Okay. From, uh, it's it's a uh, half inch from this little dust shield that's coming out of the transmission. How far are we from the steering column if I move my arm um, or the steering shaft? I would shaft? say half inch. Okay, so we're, that's, that's pretty much as far as we're going to be able to go with it. And I would say half inch from the firewall. It's about perfect right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and mark that. So this is after the polish, and then this is before. This is just your regular mandrel bend through the dies. So we're just gonna dress it up and make it look pretty before we weld it and stick it in the car. Oh, how's it finish? Where I'm holding it, it's perfect. All right, perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it then. All right. All right, that's back for you, please. Let me get one more tack for safe measure. Okay. Dang. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So John's working on polishing the stainless steel downpipe. After he does this, he has to weld on a V-band flange to go into the back of the turbo. It's 
so excited. I want to hear this car run so bad. So what we're doing now is we're going to back purse this. We're going to push all the other atmospheres out of this tube. So when we weld it and it's fully penetrated, we don't get an oxide layer. Oxides are bad. Oxides can cause the exhaust weld where we weld it at crack. And we don't want that. We want the longevity of this. Right. So by doing this, this will last as long as the car does. Yeah, you can hear it. That's cool. So we'll let this purge for a few minutes before we start welding. And then we just add an O2 sensor. We are done. The car looks like a car. Yeah, it does. It's so sick. <laughs> so some of you may be looking at this and going, what, what is this block? This is my good friend Adam at Streeter Strip Concept. I've been using this purge block for over two years now. It's phenomenal. It acts as a heat sink as well too since we're welding the stainless. It's going to want to distort. So we have it bolted down to this block of aluminum. It's going to pull all that heat out and it's purging. Actually, we have a tube back here. So it's a great thing to have. Shout out to Adam. You make killer products. Keep, keep rocking with these products, man. So some of you may be asking why we purged this tube. Uh, we purged it because we don't want any oxides to form on the inside of the tube when we're welding stainless. So if you look closely in there, you'll see that the weld inside is just as shiny as the one on the outside. So this exhaust will pretty much last as long as Kyle can own this car and not blow it up. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. But here she is, all done. That's gorgeous. All welded up. We're using one of Kyle's spare turbine housings to use as a heat sink for the V-band flange and now we're just waiting to let it cool off and then we're gonna bolt this thing up and I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> Pick up the back end of it, a little more. Well guys, that's pretty much a wrap for today. We just put the downpipe in still have to put in the bung for the O2 sensor, but we are going to wait until I can get confirmation from Haltech as far as, uh, you know, where to put it in relation to the turbine housing. But just check this out. There's several things that we still need to get. There's a handful of couplers, one down there, one there, an angled one right there, and one for here. Just, just there's some temporary ones just throughout just to keep everything kind of held in place but this thing is really really starting to come together we have that tile blow off valve right there I got everything cut right here so the bash bar now fits pretty much perfect I mean there's you just can't complain about that fitment with the intercooler and <sighs> There's always a little massaging that can be done, but I'm so happy with how this is turning out. If you guys remember in the last video, we took that test Type-X bumper that I have just to make sure everything still fit with regards to the piping and underside clearance and stuff. And I am happy to report that there are no clearance problems whatsoever. This fits perfect, this fits perfect, the pipes fit perfect. There is no need for modifying the fascia as far as we can tell so far. Oh, and I almost forgot, there is an intake air sensor that's gonna have to go in this side of the charge piping somewhere, and we still have to um, bracket in or secure in the bottom portion of the intercooler. But for one day, for one day, filming and getting all of this stuff done, I am absolutely amazed. This guy, this guy is amazing. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I was just here to watch and supervise. You deserve a fist bump. Yes. <laughs> um, thanks for having me down. It was an absolute pleasure to be down here and hanging out with you guys. Um, I definitely look forward to coming down for some more stuff. We gotta do the exhaust. 
we got to add these other sensors and bungs for the rest of the stuff, the O2 sensor. Again, thank you, Robert's Oxygen. Thank you so much for supplying us with the gas, the TIG machine, everything worked flawlessly. Um, couldn't have done that without you guys. Really, truly appreciate it. Well, everyone, that wraps up this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like below. Remember, all of your support with likes, comments, all of that stuff is just as important as watch time with getting videos out into the YouTube space nowadays. So again, thank you so much for all of the support. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. We have a lot more project content coming with the 240SX, the Jimmy, as well as some other things I have in the works with the other projects. But anyway, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.